This reaction is brought to you by my wonderful $5 or more patrons at patreon.com slash alexheights. I'd like to thank Andreas Glacel, Cullen, Ray Schuster, Andrew Graff, at HawkrowVideo69 on Twitter, B. Jabber, Ben Loden, Dan Navarro, Identitech, Jimmy, Kurt David, Mark Ventura, Matthew McLaughlin, Music Addict, Northern Sky, Richard, Support Basic Science Research, not Advanced, Will E., David Mannion, and Sam Gavshak for sponsoring this video Supporting me and my family, the channel, I appreciate it highly, everybody. Thank you so much, and I hope you all enjoy this video. So I had like, I don't know, 250 grams of coffee today. And I'm also having this buy, which does have um, a certain amount, 55 milligrams of caffeine in it, like a cup of green tea. So I might be a little wired, I don't know. But yeah, here we are. Hello, everyone. Welcome to a album reaction. Sorry this one was a little late if you're watching in real time as I'm uploading these. Um, when I had a tiny little vacation for the weekend, so I wasn't able to film last week, but we are here filming the winner of uh, poll number 29. Uh, we just finished the REM binge. Fantastic albums. Loved, loved the REM stuff. We're moving into Elliot Smith now finishing out his discography basically in its entirety pretty much um but before we do that we're doing a brief stop here uh to stop in on the winner of this poll brian eno 43 percent, 14 votes total out of my 28 patrons you guys you guys need to get in, in the in the patreon and uh vote in these polls because only like half of my patrons are doing it but that's okay um Yes, I am very excited to get to this album. Uh, I've wanted to do it for quite a long time. Um, should be pretty good stuff. For those who don't know, I do unedited reactions at my Patreon, patreon.com slash alexheights, for $5 a month. You can get access to unedited reactions from Modest Mouse going forward. That's April of 2021. Um, and that's about 60 unedited album reactions at this point, uh, including this one will be on there as well. Um, it's a great way to support the channel and get access to uh, that entire backlog of content. Uh, also, you can just hop in at the $1 a month level. Also supports the channel. Highly appreciated and allows you to vote in these polls that we do every two to four albums. Breaks up the monotony of artist binges. Uh, and just interjects interesting miscellaneous albums, of which this will be one of them. Uh, also, got to shout out NordVPN. Link in the description. Uh, check it out if you are in need of encrypting your data services and uh, accessing content from other country services. Um, have an affiliate link down there. Uh, great speeds, great prices. Um, I've used them for years and uh, I have an affiliate link down in the description if you would like to check it out. Okay, Another Green World by Eno. Uno? Um, so this is Eno's third solo album, if you're not counting the one he did with Robert Fripp in 73. Um, I love Brian Eno from what I've heard of him. Really dig the Ambient series, uh, Ambient 1 through 4. Um, Music for Airports is obviously a, a classic Ambient album. Uh, Plateau of Mirror that he did with uh, Bud is fantastic as well. And Ambient 4... Uh, I listened to that thing like religiously when I was writing my novel. Link in the description. <laughs> um, great dark ambient vibes on that. Uh, really good stuff. And um, I listened to a bit of The Pearl. I need to go back and kind of listen to that in full. That was also very pleasant. I loved the uh, aquatic nature of that album. Um, I haven't listened to Apollo. I need to. I need to listen to Apollo. Um, I think I've heard like maybe one track off of that, but I, I really like his ambient stuff. His production is also fantastic on a variety of uh, different stuff I've heard. I think the first time I came across him was uh, Viva La Vida uh, by Coldplay, and then I think he also produced uh, MX, their next album. Um, but that was kind of my introduction to Eno. Um, so yeah, this uh, this is another Green World. Um, 1975, his third solo album, um, classified in like an art rock electronic vein, uh, with like a, a hint of ambient to it, I guess. The only thing I have heard off of this album is The Big Ship, which is a fantastic track. I really like it. Um, 
we have so we have like Phil Collins on here. John Cale shows up. Uh, Fripp is also back here and there. Um, yeah, what to say about this one? This was was this the first album where he was doing his uh, oblique strategies? I don't know. If you guys don't know about that, uh, look it up. It's really interesting. Uh, 40 minutes. We have um, 14 tracks, looks like. Uh, and that's what's interesting to me, is a lot of these tracks are pretty short. Uh, there's at least one, two, three that are under two minutes. Um, a handful of them. Uh, no, wait. One, yeah, three are under two minutes. Um, there's not really much here that's long. Uh, so I'm, I'm interested to see how this is going to sound because I have a feeling that it's not really going to all sound like The Big Ship, um, which was an instrumental, uh, all, all things considered. And we have vocals on here. So, um, yeah, I don't really have a whole lot more to add. I just want to dive into this because I've been waiting to listen to this for a few years now. Um, so, yeah, let's go ahead and start with uh, the first song here, Sky Saw. Okay. Okay. I see it. I see it. Um, so I, I've done a reaction. I'll put this in the comments down below. I'll pin it if I can remember to. Um, the only other like Eno reaction I've done on the channel was from, uh, was it Here Come the Warm Jets? Uh, Dead Finks Don't Talk, which is a crazy track. That outro is nuts. Um, really, but like, the things that he was like, he definitely got a little bit of that glam here as well as far as like the, uh, not really necessarily the tone, but like the vibe. Um, there was a little bit of like jazz and funk to the bass, which was interesting. Um, obviously you have like a, what was it, a guitar? I think that was a, like a, I don't think that was a synthesizer. I think that was a guitar as that main instrument. Um but uh, yeah, definitely feeling some of the remnants of that earlier glam stuff from Eno. Uh, but it seems like he's trying to be a little bit more like subdued here. And he's toying with, with sounds a little bit, which I, I think might end up being kind of one of the highlights of this album is um, just how it sounds. And like for 75, the electronic stuff that he's able to achieve here. So anyway, um, not a whole lot to say on that. That was interesting fun um let's go to the next one a short one over fire island The, the funky bass is throwing me off a little bit. I was not really anticipating like a funky bass. Um, okay, you yeah, not a lot to say there. Just seemed kind of like a, a bridge track getting into the next thing, which is St. Elmo's Fire. I was tired. We had walked and we had scrambled through the moors and through
Interesting. Frip on the guitar there. Run through a Wimshurst whims machine, which I don't fully understand what that does. But um, yeah, I like I personally don't love Frip's uh, guitar like on um, Evening Star. I listened to a little bit of Evening Star one time. Um, I, I appreciate it. I like it to a point. It's just a little too too strong of a taste for me anyway. As as far as like it mixing with Eno's work, um, it just doesn't hit as as strongly as maybe it's trying to or it does for others for me. Um, that was interesting. That's very interesting. Yeah, this is definitely going to be a dense album to kind of pull apart. So stay tuned for the follow up, and I'll probably have way more to say. Um, as of right now. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. I'm. St I, it's not like big ship good, but uh, it's pretty good. Uh, in dark trees. Cool. I like that. Nice little uh, instrumental interlude there. I like that more than Over Fire Island. Uh, that's an interesting lead into the the next track as well, which I'm familiar with. So, all right. Well, let's uh, let's just keep going. The big ship. Love this track. Let's listen again. It's just nice. It was in that uh, David Foster Wallace movie, right? At the very end. When he's dancing. Yeah, it's just good, simple, instrumental, um, well composed, well produced. It's just solid, you know? All Come Running is the next track. Let's keep trucking. You know, um, Eno and John Cale working together makes a lot of sense to me. I've heard uh, a couple John Cale solo albums, uh, similar like art pop kind of thing, and um, definitely a, a very similar vibe. That was okay, but it got a little boring. Um, 
it was it was it was fine in principle, but uh, it didn't really do a whole lot, all things considered. Um, I don't know. I'm so hit and miss when it comes to like art rock or art pop, because sometimes it's like really cool and compelling, and other times I'm like I am not getting it. <laughs> I don't I don't vibe. Um, okay, uh, another green world. The title track, last one on side A. Um, fine. Uh, the The musical interludes have been, like, uh, aside from Over Fire Island, they've been pleasant, simple, just kind of keeps the album, like, flowing. I don't really, like, th- this album, I can't tell if it's cohesive or not, because it's, it's gear shifting a lot. So it's a sort of difficult one to tap into on first listen, because it's a little bit dense, just a little bit, enough to, like, Set you on the, on the off foot, the off beat. Anyway, we have seven tracks left. Let's keep going. Somber reptiles. <laughs> Oh, that's it. Um, cool, cool. I I like his like little uh, tonal explorations in these little ideas that he's doing. Um, I kind of wish they were like more just full on ambient instrumental tracks, though. Honestly, like I could listen to like the big ship turned into like a twenty minute piece. To be completely honest, um, and the art pop tracks like. Like I said, just don't always land with me. So might be kind of a mixed feeling on this album, um, but we'll keep going. Little Fishes. simple. I like prepared piano. Um, It always has an interesting tone to it. Uh, Very like cerebral, left brainy kind of music. Aphex Twin. Um, I can't remember what the name of that prepared piano piece is on Drux. Anyway, uh, yeah, very nice, very nice. Golden Hours. This is four minutes. I assume this will be like more of a pop song again. Signs. 
Okay. Okay. Not bad. Um, again, it's just like something about that, uh, about Eno's vocal delivery, where there's just not really a whole lot of like, it's a little stale. Um, I don't, I don't know. That seems like a harsh way to put it. It's just very like blunt, I guess. Um, I don't know. I don't love Eno as a, sing- a singer personally. Uh, the instrumental on that was was pretty interesting, though. I liked the uh, the production on it. There's some cool uh, instrument flour- flourishes here and there. Uh, that one also had uh, Fripp on Wimborne guitar. Wimborne. Okay, whatever. Uh, next one, Be Calmed. Magnificent. A full album of that, please. I'll take two. Uh, anyone know, like, more music either by Eno or anyone else that is like that? Just, like, super ambient, chill, synth stuff? Like, oh, inject it into my veins, please. Um, and I was calmed. I was calmed. Thanks, Eno. You really did it. And then uh, now we're going to go into the next one, Zawano slash Lava. And it's going to be like, doom, ding, ding, doom, doom, doom. <laughs> Like, come on. Oh. Okay, fine, simple. Um, sort, sort of a ambient soundscape piece. The uh, the B side has been uh, way more chill than I was expecting. Like I know that like B sides, especially like in this kind of realm of ambient stuff. You know, you think of like David Bowie's Low as well. It's a more subdued. Um, but there's been like I feel like Golden Hours is like the only thing on this side so far that's been remotely poppy. Also, I think everything has been instrumental except for that, right? I don't know, but we have two tracks left. Everything merges with the night. I've been waiting all evening hours. Everything merges with the night. Everyone I see. Under the Like a cushion on the sea, the sleep everything ponders in picking the straw from my All right, all right. 
Um, similar to Golden Hours, like slow, takes its time. Um, I'm assuming this last track will be a bit more like instrumental. So if I'm like looking at this uh, in terms of like the, the art pop tracks, um, we got St. Elmo's Fire, All Come Running, Golden Hours, and Everything Merges with the Night, right? That's it. Which all things considered, I mean, for 14 tracks to only have four of them be like remotely poppy is, it's interesting. That was, that was um, a better ratio than I was expecting, actually. Most of this album has been ambient, all things considered. Um, see, Elmo's Fire is probably my favorite. I don't know. The, the re-listen of this will be very helpful because, like I said, it's a little dense, a little bit complicated. But for the most part, I, I've liked... All of this. B-side has been my favorite for, for certain. Um, anyway, I'll talk more about it once we finish it up here with the last track, Spirits Drifting. My son is losing his mind out there. That's okay. I am too. Interesting way to end it. Uh, sort of haunting, really dissonant notes there. Um, tritones, perhaps. Wow. Um, so, that's that. <laughs> I, uh, I'm a little... Um, I'm, a, I'm a little taken aback. Uh, I... So I'll get it out of the way. I didn't dislike it, but man, it was um, hard to get a read on what tone it was trying to go for. It's definitely like otherworldly um, as far as the like ambient work goes. Uh, the, the art pop tracks, not quite my speed. Like I said, thankfully there's only really four of them here. Uh, All Come Running, Boring, um, Golden Hours, Fine. Everything Merges with the Night, also t a bit boring. Um, and St. Elmo's Fire, I feel like, had some interesting elements to it. But, uh, again, like I said, I am eager to re-listen to some of these. Maybe those tracks will grow on me. Um, oh yeah, Sky Saw also had some vocals, didn't it? Um, Over Fire Island, the outro is interesting. In Dark Trees was cool. Big Ship, great. Another Green World, fine. Uh, somber reptiles, little fishes, pretty good. Be calm, fantastic. Big ship and be calmed. Adore those tracks. Those are my two highlights. And like I said, if anyone knows more music that sounds like be calmed, um, I I'd eat that up in a heartbeat. Uh, very kind of almost like new age ambient. Um, I guess you could say. Uh, really fantastic stuff. So another green world. It's done. We listen to it. I don't know how I feel about it. Stay tuned for the follow-up because I, I'm going to need to... Di this is one I'm, I'm going to need to digest a little bit. Um, get a feel for the tone. Um, kind of let that settle in a little bit. It, it's definitely another green world. It, like, it feels transportative. It's cool also to see his transition from that glam stuff because it seems, it seems like it's a... I mean, I haven't heard uh, Taking Tiger Mountain, but like it seems like uh, he's shifting from that glam stuff pretty abruptly into this kind of a thing. Um, and then that's also followed up afterwards with Discreet Music, uh, which I haven't heard. And then Evening Star is, uh, like I said, I listened to a bit of that, maybe three tracks, um, maybe even the whole thing I don't fully remember, but like super droney. Um, ambient work and then that's that that leads right into um, the uh, 
I mean, he, he dips back into the art stuff with Before and After Science, but he he starts hitting on the ambient stuff in the late 70s, and he kind of does that for a good portion going into the 80s. Um, does he ever really, like, hit up on the, the art rock stuff again on his own? Because he, he toys with uh, David Byrne a little bit, um, John Cage as well with the... Man, my, my family is disintegrating out there. Um, what was it? Uh, wait, it was John Cage and maybe someone else. Dang it, hold on. Spinning Away. That was 90. John Cale. Sorry, not John Cage. John Cale. Yeah, so um, it seems like he kind of moves out of the... Uh, the art rock, art pop stuff for a good portion of the seven, late 70s and 80s. Interesting. Yeah, the, the transition is cool. Um, I, I, just, I don't know how well it works as like a, a full album tonally. But anyway, that is uh, that is another Green World. Um, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. That was a good album. That was a good album. Um, but yeah, I am excited to continue trucking forward with Elliot Smith. Um, hitting up him from the beginning uh, with Roman Candle, is that right? Um, so yeah, that's coming up. Stay tuned for that. Um, yeah, so that is it, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Things to plug yet again. Got the Patreon, patreon.com slash Alex Heights. Uh, dollar a month access to voting and polls. Five dollars a month access to unedited reactions of which this will be one. Uh, also got to plug the Discord, link in the description for that. Got about 170, 175 members over there right now. We got music discussions, topster charts, memes, controversial topics, all of the stuff. Uh, all the people who watch me listen to things, you can talk there. Anyway. That's all I got for you guys. I hope you're all doing well. Feels good to have done another album reaction, and I'm very excited to get to Elliot Smith coming up next. Um, that'll be good stuff. We have good things on the horizon. Um, more streams and stuff as well. I think we're just going to... I should do a Berserk stream soon, um, but I want to keep trucking with the uh, the album reaction retrospects. Those have been fun, and people have been really liking those, so I'll try to prior prioritize doing more of those. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys. Hope you all enjoyed the video. Thank you all so much for watching. And until next time, Godspeed. <laughs>